We also have to talk about the synchrony. So basically the timing, huh? The synchronous or asynchronous systems. So the speeds, the notes, how fast are they? The messages, how long do the messages take? So basically there's three kinds of systems. So I mentioned it already before, asynchronous, synchronous, and partially synchronous. So for the different algorithms, it changes a lot which one you assume. Huh? So it changes a lot. So if you assume synchronous, you make a nice algorithm, maybe it does not work in a partially synchronous or asynchronous. Huh? So, uh, so it makes a big difference. So the most, uh, the loosest, the most less constraining system is the asynchronous, no timing assumption, means that the processing time can be arbitrary but finite, no bound of transmission time but finite. Okay, so you could still observe the causality. Remember the, the Lamport clock and the vector clocks that we defined before, but you cannot observe the total order on such a system. There's no hardware clock. So the internet, what about the internet? Because that's the system we're really interested in. Huh? Is it asynchronous? Well, in some sense it's asynchronous. But in practice, we'll see that it's actually, you could model it as partially synchronous. This would be very bad. Huh? If the internet would truly be asynchronous, with no bounds on the messages, we would be uh, really in a bad situation. Huh? I mean, it would be very hard to do distributed algorithms if the internet were truly asynchronous. So, you could say, yeah, maybe it is a little bit, but truly not really. Luckily, it's really not asynchronous. Huh? So, asynchronous is kind of the worst case. It's hardest to make the algorithms. In the other extreme, there's synchronous systems. So here you have known upper bounds. So upper bound that you know on the computation and on the communication. That means whenever you send a message, you know it's going to take maximum 10 millisecond or 1 millisecond or 30 microsecond, whatever. Right? So basically, in this system, you have these upper bounds, so you have physical time clocks because of these bounds. Huh? So you know what the time is, you can check the time. So basically you know the clock drift, clock skew, so the drift is how the clocks change between the different nodes. Huh? So the clock skew is the difference in time between the clocks and the different nodes. So this is where you know all this. So this is very strict system. Huh? You know all these bounds. So this is the internet would not be like this, really, because unless the bounds were very, very high, and so the system would the algorithms would be very slow. So there's actually not so many real synchronous systems. Some systems you could model them as synchronous, like uh, multi-core processors you know, are like synchronous or clusters with very high performance backplanes, local, some local area networks. So why do we study synchronous systems? The algorithms are usually very easy on such a system because we know a lot. If you know the upper bound, then if the message does not arrive, then you know there must be a failure. That's strong information, okay? So you really know a lot in these systems. So this is very strong. So in any kind of a big system, it, it won't be so synchronous. Huh? The only synchronous systems will be the small local systems. So synchronous systems are the easiest, but uh, real-world systems are usually not going to be synchronous. Okay. So we have these two extremes. Huh? Asynchronous, which is basically very loose, no bounds, 
And so the internet, in some sense, started out being like that, or synchronous, when you know the balance. So asynchronous is very bad. So the distributed systems people started thinking about that and said, we're kind of uh, messed up here, huh? So because asynchronous is so hard, can't we invent some model that is close to the internet and that actually makes it easy to write algorithms? So partial synchrony is like that. It's a model that's in some sense between. So it starts out being asynchronous for a certain time. After a certain time, it becomes synchronous. So it starts out that you don't know the bounds, but after a certain time, there are bounds. Okay? And once the bounds exist, you can find out what they are. Okay? So it's asynchronous that becomes synchronous. And it, so for example, if you have an algorithm that's running, then it will have a long enough window, so eventually things start behaving nicely, maybe not at the beginning, huh? and once there are things behaving nicely, the algorithm can work. Okay. So algorithms can use this idea. So are there such systems? So it turns out the internet can be modeled pretty well in this way, because in practice there are bounds but sometimes you don't know them. For example, if I'm sending messages between two nodes on the internet, maybe there's congestion, maybe something is happening, so maybe it takes 10 milliseconds, but sometimes 100 milliseconds. Well, if it's like that, in the beginning it's like messy, but as soon as you realize that the 100 is more like the bound, then eventually you realize that there is a bound, it's 100 milliseconds, okay? Because the, the timing depends on the distance of the nodes and the congestion. So there will be an upper bound, and eventually you will, you will find out, you will know what it is. Okay? So internet is kind of like this. So partially synchronous is a very nice way, a much more realistic way of modeling internet. Okay? So if the time is like this, so here in this line, the algorithm starts, here, in the beginning part, we don't know the bounds. Could be anything. So the system is like asynchronous. So maybe the algorithm doesn't work. But if, at some point, the system will be synchronous. So at this point, we kind of explored the, all of the, the routers. Okay, So we know that there's these bounds. So eventually, you have kind of explored the space, the communication, and there's some bounds always going to be there. Maybe this is only communication inside of Belgium, so the bounds are going to be low, but some of the two nodes are in Europe, somewhere else, like in France or UK, whatever. So some of the messages are longer. So eventually you realize what the scope is and you realize that these are the bounds. But maybe later on, maybe poof, there's a message that has to go to Japan. It's even slower. So actually, the bound is even higher. So maybe this line is a little bit farther. Okay? But eventually, you know kind of the space, the area that your algorithm operates. So you know that there's going to be these bounds. But you don't know that at the beginning. Okay? In the beginning, it depends on where the nodes are. You don't really know. There's no global knowledge. But your algorithm will be working in some kind of a space, a geographical space. And there will be some bounds. So once you touch most of that space, you will know the, the, the bounds, what they are, and then the algorithm, you can treat it like synchronous, okay? So it's because the internet is geographical, is, is extended in space, and the farther you go, the higher the bounds get. So it depends on how far out the algorithm has to talk, okay? So in practice, it kind of behaves like this, huh? So in the beginning, you don't know how far the algorithm is talking, so you don't know the bounds, uh, but eventually you do. There are bounds, and once there are bounds, you can find out what they are. You can do like heartbeat. So once their bounds exist, you can find them. Okay? I mean, you can also pretend to find the bounds here, but they won't be correct until you've explored most of the space. Okay? You see, that's kind of an intuition, huh? 
So the reason why internet is partially synchronous is because it's spread over a geographical space where the farther you go, the higher the bounds get. And the bounds that you will achieve depends on how far out the algorithm is talking, okay? So you don't know what they are in the beginning, but eventually you will know, okay? So that's kind of why you could assume the internet is not pure asynchronous, but it's more like it's partially synchronous, okay? And it turns out this is a very nice model, and some algorithms have very, are very interesting because you could define the algorithm here, even if you cannot define it in an asynchronous model. So this is a strictly better model than, than uh, asynchronous. So if you want an algorithm that runs on the whole internet, huh, then it has to work on this model. If your algorithm is running just inside of a building, local area network, then maybe you don't need this. You can assume it's kind of synchronous, okay? So, uh, but if you have a synchronous algorithm and you try to run it on the, this kind of system, then sometimes it won't work, okay? It won't terminate or it won't give you good results, okay? It won't give you a result. So you have to be careful. So, uh, but this one will work on the internet, partially synchronous, okay?